This is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com with the garden update, the uh, after last frost date garden update. So the last frost date was uh, April 15th and now it's uh, April 30th and I'm going to show you the updates. I've also was gone for a week in Florida and I just got back so you might have saw my other videos touring Florida. But the first thing we got done was we planted out all the tomatoes. So here we have 36 tomato plants. They're spaced out approximately uh, 20 inches apart. Um, for the large tomatoes and then we have some small patio style tomatoes that are spaced out basically 12 inches apart because they they won't get any higher than this these guys here are going to get as tall as these cages now what we're using for the cages here are this is just galvanized fencing wire it's uh, pretty inexpensive at your Lowe's or Home Depot and it comes in a big roll so we just cut off the roll probably into about I don't know two two and a half feet or so and then just uh, twist it back on each other and make a spiral so the plant could grow up the center and then up to the top and this was the most inexpensive stuff to use I don't like it because uh, you know some of these squares are a little bit hard to get your hand through but then you kind of bend them and break them out of the way and then you could reach inside and then for these guys we just use a standard tomato cages for the most part these standard tomato cages like this are pretty much useless unless you have a small patio style plant and in addition I really like color and uh, also like to have everything that I'm growing edible so you could see in this whole bed here we have uh, lots and lots of flowers planted so some of them were definitely planned such as the marigolds because they do uh, you know are basically uh, uh, basically make it so that insects don't want to come here because there's some uh, chemicals naturally occurring but that being said you can eat the marigolds are high in uh, basically antioxidants so they're really good for us as well as we have some of my favorites uh, pansies and we have all different color pansies so these like, I don't know, dark magenta ones to so these purple ones over here. And we have uh, yellow ones there and white ones here. And, you know, we want to be eating the rainbow. It's very important to eat the rainbow. And it's not always possible to eat blueberries all the time, you know, to eat your purple or, you know, eat, uh, I don't know, white fruits or eat blue fruits. So eat your flowers because all these flowers, the pigments that make up the color in the flowers are all rich antioxidants and every different color has a different spectrum of antioxidants. So we want to eat a wide variety of flowers. Now it's true you may say, well John, hey when your tomatoes get big it's going to shade out some of your flowers. Well that's completely true and that's definitely a planned obsolescence. You know, I mean some of these flowers are going to make it, some aren't. I planted some uh, some pansies in full sun last year and actually they didn't make it so maybe under the shade you know, maybe some will make it some won't, and that's fine. But right now, they look beautiful. So let, let me show you what else we've been doing. All right, so this is the pepper bed we planted out uh, probably about two weeks ago now. It's doing pretty good. And as you notice, we put these stakes here. And uh, we put stakes on every pepper plant because these peppers will get kind of large. And they, in my experience, they do tend to, you know, um, bend over. So we're going to want to stake them up. So we're staking them now. We put large stakes in there now to support them all and uh, and uh, we just watered it and they're looking really good actually there's some that even have some small peppers on it I was seeing the other day you can see these the bigger ones here are flowering and they're starting to have some peppers on them like this one here and anyways they're doing pretty good and let's uh, check out some other updates here all right so here's the other thing we're doing we're pulling out slowly the winter garden so this was a winter garden bed you can see my other videos for what was in it but we're slowly pulling it out. We harvested all the peas in here, and now we're slowly harvesting and using all the produce in here. So as the days go on, we've been harvesting more and more, and, and pretty soon we'll basically um, get to replant it. And uh, you can see here the soil level, you know, we filled it originally to the top, and the soil level sunk down at least two inches. So this is the perfect time to re-enrich the soil. We're going to re-enrich with uh, basically rock dust and also use compost to fill this up to level and then maybe in each hole we'll also put some other fertilizer to uh, get things growing off to a good start actually this bed is going to be all more peppers i love peppers we planted one bed out in peppers already this next bed is also going to be peppers so stay tuned for a future episode uh planting out this uh this newly uh cleared or almost newly cleared pepper bed so this is the herb bed. We finally got it done. You saw it maybe in the construction phases, and I don't know if I ever actually showed it fully planted out. So it's been fully planted out for, I don't know, maybe a month or so now. It's doing really well. I have this cilantro here. It's really towering, and I was just, I think that was my breakfast this morning. I wandered out and just said, oh, let's see how that cilantro tastes. Man, that stuff is good, and I was eating several mouthfuls of cilantro along with my sugar snap peas and snow peas for breakfast and just grazing <laughs> here in my garden 
for breakfast. So we have uh, cilantro here, and then in between it, you can kind of see here we have the uh, stevia, and it, the stevia doesn't quite grow as fast as some of these other things, but they're coming up. They're doing pretty good there. Stevia is basically a, a sweetener without the sugar, so there's no sugar, but it just tastes sweet. It's from uh, South America. I do have another episode on uh, growing stevia. It's definitely best propagated by cuttings. Let's see, we have a uh, cilantro, uh, stevia, cilantro, stevia, cilantro, stevia. And let's see, other things we got is uh, fennel, bronze fennel, and all different kinds of herbs. I don't even remember the name of them all. Tarragon, parsley. Uh, oh, and these are really cool. These are garlic chives. And so uh, besides just the garlic chives, you could actually eat the flowers and actually the flower petals. So this looks like one big flower, but guess what? It's many little flowers. If you look at the side there, many different flowers. And you could just literally pick one of the flowers here like this, and you could put that in a salad or right in your mouth. Tastes just like garlic chives. Nice, interesting flavor to spice up that salad. So that's why I have the herb bed, you know. I could pick a couple different herbs and fresh herbs. You know, why use dry herbs when you could use fresh? Fresh, this is always best. This has, you know, a lot better, it's going to have a lot better flavor, the water content, and everything. So I could come out here and pick all these different herbs and mix it into my salad dressing or mix it into my salad. And, mmm, that's going to just make that salad pop. It's going to taste so good. So, oh, the last thing I want to show in my, in my herb bed was this plant here. And it, it's not necessarily an herb. But this was actually rescued from a from the Petaluma Community Garden that you saw the episode on a couple uh, I don't know shows ago. Uh, this is actually called Magenta Spring Lambs Quarter. This is my favorite lambs quarter because look at that unique exotic color in there, man. That's just like a nice magenta color, and this stuff actually comes off if you do this enough. And you can see the coloring there on my finger. So the I don't know, it's just really a trip. And once again, we want to be eating things rich in color. And how many things do you eat that are magenta? So what I like to do is sometimes just pop the whole top off. It's going to encourage some side shooting and more of, of the uh, magenta tips because the magenta only appears at the tips and not on the regular leaves and usually when they're young. And just eat it right off the plant. And down below, um, down below the magenta spring lambs quarter, like over here, we have plenty of regular lambs quarter coming up. And that's really interesting because I, I just, I mean, we didn't really plant that there. So, you know, we're going to probably be thinning these out. You can just pull up whole plants and eat it. Lamb's quarter is so good. I like them, especially in the baby stage. They're definitely like uh, more delicate, have a much better flavor than when the leaf gets so big, you know, they get a little bit more fibrous, but it's all edible. All right, we're in my tree kale forest now, or soon to be tree kale forest. Another thing we've been doing is actually, um, my goal for this bed was originally just, you know, all these tree kales, and I had planted originally nine tree kales, and you can see they're towering at 12 feet now. It's pretty amazing. Everybody that comes to my house, they're like, what's that thing growing? They've never seen such a thing. I mean, it's literally like a tree, but it's it's not really a tree. But they also known as a tree collards. Really delicious. I have other episodes on the tree kale or tree collards. And, you know, I have leaves of plenty. These would be great for wraps. You could make, you know, a put fill it in here and then just roll these up into a wrap and then eat it a living wrap out of a leaf you could eat so what we've done here is we've been propagating these um, by cutting so we'll cut those and then propagate them put them in a rooting hormone and then start them out and we've had a whole bunch of starts going in the backyard and what we did is uh we started early so definitely when you grow the tree kale or the tree collards you want to get a nice heavy duty steak from the get-go so this might look real funny now because it's this plant here is you know about a foot tall, this uh, tree kale here. But let me tell you, you know, if you don't put one of these in now, you're going to pay for it later because you're going to get this kind of stuff. Look at this. We didn't stake these up in the beginning, and the stalk will just move, grow, and bend and go back up. So we want to train it uh, really well, just like this one here we trained a lot better. And it pretty much just goes straight up and up and up and up and up and straight until it gets kind of funky up there. But nonetheless, you want to train your tree kale early. It's very important. So we have all these big stakes that are, I don't know, these are eight-foot stakes probably sunk in the ground at least a foot, maybe a foot and a half sticking out. And we have, now we have uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27 tree kale plants in this bed. So that's going to provide lots of food throughout the whole year. Uh, these have been going a year, you know, not one flower, not one seed, and they just keep kicking out those delicious edible leaves. So my goal is 
one day to have the majority of my garden perennial vegetables or perennial greens and this is definitely one of them and that's why I dedicated one whole bed to perennial vegetables so I'll be guaranteed food 365 days a year and I'll never have to replant these things and plus I just think they look real cool the other thing we've done down below is because I like lots of color and it would look kind of barren um, without them is we did a lot of flowers so all these are edible flowers much like under the tomatoes as well these do get partial shade they're not going to get full sun because the uh, the tree kales above them and then in the in the bed of fr in front of that we have the sugar snap peas and snow peas so we have basically violas and pansies and marigolds in here all of which the flowers are all edible so they'll be great to dress up a salad you could make candy flowers you could dehydrate the flowers and then save them for later to sprinkle on things so those are the main updates here at the garden uh, hope you've enjoyed this segment and uh, we'll see you next time this is John Kohler with growingyourgreens.com